Hi, good afternoon. I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram, consultant neonatologist. Thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel and watching the videos. I hope they are helpful. This video is intended for the new parents who would have a lot of questions about what is happening with their baby in the first few days. I would like to uh, address them system wise. I have uh, recently uploaded a video on postnatal management and uh, in the introduction to that video I have given the time frame within which certain uh, points are raised. So it would be helpful if you go back and refer to those points as I mentioned them in brief in this video. I will also be adding a video on common skin rashes in newborns. So in relation to the skin care you can uh, refer to that video which will be up. Uh, uploaded shortly as well as uh, the one I had uploaded earlier about the live session. Uh, first of all, I mean uh, the newborn period is a very uh, intense period, a lot of changes happening in the baby system and the parents are getting used to that. Almost every organ system in the body is undergoing changes. So uh, parents are anxious about a number of issues and I will try to address a few of them. Obviously this is not going to cover all the aspects of care but some of the more common questions we face in our day to day practice. In terms of uh, skin care, I mean uh, I have addressed a few things already in the uh, video on skin care. However, it's important to remember that uh, there are a few rashes that happen in the immediate newborn period. and. Uh, most of them are benign, you don't need any action. It's important to prevent dryness, it's important to take care of uh, the sensitive skin. You may need to trim the nails early because that's one of the common reasons a baby scratches himself or herself. And there is no time limit within which to do it. Of course, if the baby has long nails and you're afraid to trim it, you can file it to start with and then get brave enough to trim it slowly. It's not uncommon to find uh, the erythema neonatorum which is a reddish uh, rash which happens in the first two to three days and you get white spots in the middle or sometimes even small pustules that fades away within a few days. And uh, many babies get uh, reddish marks on the back of the neck as well as over the eyelids and the middle forehead. Uh, these are the commonest uh, spots we see. You have the neonatal pustulosis which can be a little more scary looking. You have infantile acne and uh, of course over time you get dry skin, prickly heat and so on as well. I mentioned about cord care in the uh, video on skin care and you can refer to that as well. In simple terms, uh, keep the nappy folded below the cord area because keeping it covered will cause anaerobes which are bacteria which multiply with low oxygen. They cause it to smell and appear wet so keep it dry allow it to separate on its own when it is separating you may have to uh, use an alcohol swab around to clean the sticky areas the congestion of the eyes and nose soon after delivery is quite normal if you imagine staying upside down for a few uh, minutes even your nose gets congested your eyes gets congested so the baby is descending down the vaginal path or even without vaginal delivery the head may have been engaged and when the mother is sitting upright or walking, the head, uh, head tends to be down. So this problem tends to be more if the baby had cord around the neck or the vaginal delivery was a difficult one. Eyes may be uh, puffy for the first three to four days and it's also normal for the eyes to be puffy on the side the baby is lying on, simply because the tissue around the eyes is quite soft and some fluid logging there will cause it to be swollen. Nasal congestion is uh, also common for the same reason. We simply advise nasal saline drops on a repeated basis. It can be used before the feeds or whenever the baby has congestion. Many of you would observe baby sneezing in the first uh, few days and it persists for a few month or two. Sneezing is just an adaptation to the postnatal uh, breathing and uh, it's not due to allergy, it's not due to infection. So if the baby looks otherwise well, and the sneezing is repeated, you can use the saline drops again to clear the nose, otherwise it doesn't need any intervention. The same applies to uh, hiccups as well, so it's a bothersome complaint but uh, baby doesn't seem to be bothered by it, it can happen on a repeated basis. It's uh, related to the incoordinate swallowing in the first few weeks and it can happen on a recurrent basis. 
so you don't need to do anything for the hiccups as well and it will settle down on its own one common problem that the parents were noticed in the first few weeks is uh, neonatal mastitis which means a breast engorgement this can happen in both boys and girls it's related to the effect of the maternal hormone called estrogen and this settles down on its own the most important thing here to remember is that you shouldn't squeeze on that area because if you squeeze you may cause cracks you may uh, squeeze out some milky liquid that's expected but don't squeeze it you may introduce infection and cause more harm coming on to the respiratory pattern and the adaptation so some babies especially those born by cesarean delivery may need monitoring in the ICU briefly if they have fast breathing or need for oxygen or support this is because the baby's lungs in the womb has fluid and this needs to absorb before the baby can breathe comfortably a few babies may grunt which means they make a noise with breathing through the closed glottis and uh, that grunting noise helps to keep the lung open but if it keeps happening you will have to inform the nurse or doctor looking after the baby they can check the oxygen levels make sure baby is normal beyond this period the baby may have uh, periodic breathing where especially during a phase of sleep called rapid eye movement sleep they may have shallow breathing followed by rapid breathing for a period of time you may even notice a little bit of indrawing but if you arouse the baby and baby breathes normally then you don't need to be worried about that if the breathing is fast if the breathing is labored baby is disinterested in reacting normally is not able to feed these are signs that you should uh, get the baby checked in terms of uh, cardiovascular adaptation i mean it's uh, common to find cold hands and feet in the beginning it's a bit bluish but then it clears with time and as long as the baby is active responding normally you don't need to be worried of course you need to take care of the temperature in the room first two days is very critical and that's why most units do not bathe the baby in this period uh, if the baby is uh, active and the uh, feet become warm with time you don't need to do anything different most of the units will do the critical heart disease screening you can refer to the video i mentioned on postnatal care for more detail on that Uh, sometimes a pediatrician assesses the baby and says there is a murmur which needs review most of the murmurs in this stage are transitional if the baby's heart disease screening is normal baby is otherwise active and feeding well we have time to review just follow the pediatrician's advice the murmur is just an additional sound due to the way the blood flows in the heart so you don't need to panic if the baby is well and obviously an echocardiogram may be done or suggested uh, the timing will depend on how well the baby is how the results of the oxygen screen are and so on uh, urine and stools i mean in the first 24 hours majority of the babies pass urine and stools many babies up to 20% may pass urine at delivery so it's very important that the nurse attending the delivery informs the parents and also makes a note that this has been passed so that there is no confusion obviously the feeding is uh, low on the first day or two and because the baby is in a state of dehydration the urine output is low in that period this will improve with time and uh, obviously the baby will uh, as the feed increases the baby starts uh, improving with the urine output in the first 2 3 days it's normal to have two or three wet nappies but then every 4 to 6 hours we expect urine and that is a good sign that the baby is getting enough breast milk so the weight monitoring as well as the urine output monitoring are key indicators uh, baby sleeping pattern improves as well when the feed improves stooling is very variable of course uh, first uh, stool passage is very important uh, because it indicates the tract is normal and uh, passage of meconium after that is very variable usually babies pass by 24 hours but we can wait a little longer up to 36 to 48 hours if the baby is in hospital Uh, before discharge we like to see the baby passing stool so if stool is not passed we tend to give a suppository or stimulate uh, to confirm the passage subsequent to that uh, stool passage doesn't have much meaning in terms of feed output because it's related to the gut movement more than the feed intake the color change the transitional stool change is of course related to the milk coming in and so the dark meconium the blackish meconium changes to the greenish or yellowish stools over the first 3 to 5 days of age this can vary and it's a bit slower in the premature baby so are fed slower and uh, obviously uh, babies tend to pass stool with every feed in the beginning especially when they are breastfeeding the stool is watery cd yellow stools and uh, uh, when the baby passes gas some liquid leaks out that's normal as well the most important precaution here is skin care of the nappy area 
don't use wipes if possible use wet uh, water and wipes and uh, if uh, you are wiping don't use pressure and uh, obviously use an api rash cream as a preventive anything with zinc oxide uh, as a barrier will help and uh, most of combinations are good uh, in terms of uh, other aspects of uh, newborn care the feeding pattern is important in the beginning we encourage you to feed frequently so every uh, two to three hours uh, eight to twelve feeds a day and uh, the latch is important you need support of the lactation consultant ensure that uh, you feel comfortable feeding some pain is normal in the beginning and especially as the milk starts coming in you feel engorgement but the engorgement doesn't mean you have a lot of milk it just means you are starting to get the milk and uh, baby is going to be a bit sleepy in the first 24 hours especially the good sized ones that's normal because they are managing with the stores they have in their body subsequent to that the uh, baby starts getting hungry and will stimulate you more frequently uh, follow the advice of the lactation specialist prolonged breastfeeding is not necessarily a good thing because you may hurt your breast so at least 15 to 20 minutes of effective latch is important every two to three hours and uh, some mothers may need stimulation by expressing the breast milk and this encourages you to empty the breast in case the baby is not managing to empty the breast effectively and this will allow the milk to start flowing more easily this is more important in primary gravida mothers the first baby or where the first 24 hours to 36 hours shows an increasing weight loss in the jaundice most babies lose weight uh, uh, about 3% to 4% on the first day and then 3% on the second and third day up to 10 to 12% weight loss is expected in breastfeeding babies if the weight loss is excessive uh, as per the day basis it's not hard and fast and the baby if milk is coming you don't need to be scared and uh, even if there is a little jaundice i mean encourage uh, expressing milk and topping up if needed but don't use formula unnecessarily because introducing formula is not necessarily a good thing for the breastfeeding so unless there is a definite medical indication don't choose formula baby does uh, become hungrier by day two and they start crying more but this is a natural process so stick with breastfeeding and uh, regular feeding once the weight gain is confirmed and we know that you have enough milk you can start uh, spacing out the feeds more uh, encourage the baby to feed like two to four hours or two to four and a half hours pattern as the baby gets older they can sleep longer without any concern for their health uh, around the one month of age five to six hours sleep is a good thing if it does happen so this pattern is set by how you react to the baby's needs and so we have to try and space it as best as you can it's a natural way it's called semi-demand pattern so you have a minimum interval of two hours and then you wait for the baby there are some occasions where you'll have to feed uh, the baby to keep the baby calm because you cannot control how much the baby takes at one go so uh, with this we will uh, stop this video i hope it is helpful and i would encourage all of you to watch the uh, playlist where i've added videos on infant life support or cpr as parents you should be aware of how to react uh, to life-threatening scenarios if there is choking if there is a sudden stopping of breathing and so on so watch it and also encourage your family to be familiar with the situation thank you if you have any questions you can put in the comments